Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the uh, Voice of Reason. Today, we are now entering day 107, 107 of the uh, ongoing war between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. And uh, today, we're going to start uh, in the uh, several Donetsk and uh, uh, Izum area of uh, operations. We are continuing to see a uh, very much a high pressure campaign uh, by Russian forces. Uh, continuing uh, in this uh, area of, uh, of operations. Uh, we are seeing right now, uh, bet running from Izum all the way to several Donetsk and down to uh, Popasna, uh, roughly 70-plus uh, 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 battalion tactical groups of the uh, Russian military uh, continuing its uh, high-pressure uh, campaign uh, in this area. Uh, we're also starting to see reports that uh, the uh, Ukrainian military is starting to withdraw uh, some of its uh, ground forces uh, from these areas. Uh, right now we're starting to see, and I'll switch over to a cl closer view of uh, several Donetsk and Lil uh, Lil uh, Lilychansk, but uh, we've started to see uh, U Ukrainian ground forces that have been now withdrawn from several Donetsk uh, we believe that uh, active resistance uh, in terms of uh, maneuver elements and, and organized resistance uh, in the area of uh, several Donetsk uh, is, has been greatly reduced by the Ukrainian military and they are now looking uh, at uh, protecting and defending areas on the western bank of the Donetsk River. Uh, more ominous for Ukrainian forces is the fact that uh, Russian forces have uh, crossed the uh, Donetsk River uh, south, uh, southeast of uh, Lilychansk, and uh, are uh, are pushing uh, towards that locale uh, to from the uh, uh, south southeast of uh, of that direction, and you can kind of see what's happening here on the map. You can see Russian forces have have crossed south, obviously from locales such as uh, Pop uh, Popasna and uh, other areas as well and are continuing its push uh, after crossing uh, the Donets uh, River. They're continuing to push along the west bank of the Donets River towards uh, Lilichansk. And uh, we, we suspect that uh, that is of great concern right now for uh, Ukrainian forces and uh, also just the, uh, the, the sheer level of casualties that uh, Ukrainian forces are, uh, are taking uh, right now. We've heard reports uh, by uh, senior members of Ukrainian leadership that indicates between 100, 100 and uh, 200 uh, KIA per day uh, is now uh, being taken by Ukrainian forces in some of these areas in uh, the uh, eastern Donbass. And, uh, and what we're also starting to see is uh, the uh, pullback of these forces that are being redeployed uh, to other areas uh, such as Zaporizhia and uh, Kherson. So right now it's, it's much easier for Ukrainian forces to maneuver and operate unmolested uh, within the vicinity of Mykolaiv and, uh, and Zaporizhia and, uh, and, and, and the kind of the uh, north of uh, the uh, Crimea and west of, uh, of uh, Kramatorsk and Slovyansk. Uh, the uh, Russian uh, air interdiction efforts are, are much more prevalent uh, in these areas in the eastern Donbass where we're seeing the continued use of uh, long-range multiple launch rocket systems uh, with the use of reconnaissance drones by Russian forces to strike uh, at uh, the uh, maneuvering infrastructure of Ukrainian forces uh, as they continue to try and resupply its forces in the field and uh, move forces around. So the interdiction efforts of the Russian military are much more present in the uh, eastern Donbass uh, as opposed to areas uh, around Zaporizhia and uh, Kherson. And uh, we're starting to see Ukrainian forces redeploy to some of these areas uh, to launch uh, limited uh, ground operations against Russian forces. And uh, we believe this is designed to uh, draw Russian forces from uh, eastern Ukraine and have some of those forces uh, be redeployed near Kherson 
and uh, south of, uh, of Zaporizhia. Now we've seen recently a buildup uh, both of uh, Russian forces south of, uh, of Zaporizhia and we're also seeing the buildup of Ukrainian forces as, as well. And we anticipate that at some point we could see a fairly large uh, engagement uh, start to break out uh, southeast of uh, Zaporizhia. Now it's hard to say is this a, a counter operation by Ukrainian forces uh, in the direction towards uh, Melitopol or is this uh, the Ukrainians preparing for some sort of Russian offensive or it could be a little bit of both uh, in this uh, in this area. But both sides uh, right now are building up forces uh, in this locale uh, and again one one reason is that uh, Ukrainian forces are finding it a little bit easier to move uh, pieces around uh, in this area, unmol again, unmolested uh, by uh, Russian uh, tactical air assets and uh, long-range rocket fire. Uh, it sounds like uh, because of the ongoing deteriorating situation around Slovyansk, Kramatorsk, Lichansk, Bakhmut, that uh, the uh, Ukrainian military may be uh, getting ready to hang things up uh, in the uh, east. Now, uh, while there is still organized resistance, especially north-northwest of Slovyansk, south-southeast of uh, and, and east of Kramatorsk around Bakhmut, uh, again, we are starting to see less organized resistance taking place around several Donetsk. And uh, right now, uh, we suspect that more or less on the uh, eastern bank of the Donetsk River, especially in the uh, several Donetsk area of operations, uh, is becoming more or less a mop-up operation uh, by Russian forces. And uh, the Ukrainians right now are really trying and focusing on uh, preventing this uh, move along the uh, western uh, bank of the Donetsk River towards uh, Lysychansk. And uh, if uh, Russian forces are able to continue and uh, and uh, force their way again along the kind of along this broad frontal zone uh, towards Lysychansk, and then at some point uh, cross the uh, Donetsk River uh, around uh, this locale as well, things are going to get very 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 complicated uh, for these uh, remaining Ukrainian brigades uh, that are attempting to uh, defend uh, both. Uh, the remaining forces in several Donetsk and obviously more importantly uh, Lysychansk and right now you have the 17th Tank Brigade the 118th Territorial Brigade 80th uh, Air Mobile Brigade now we believe some of these units uh, are being repositioned uh, to the south around Zapor Zaporizhia is that an offensive operation or is it some sort of, of a defensive operation to counter a uh, prospective uh, Russian operation taking place near Zaporizhia. Again, very difficult to say uh, as we don't re receive the war plans from either side. You got the 58th Motorized Brigade, 27th National Guard, uh, 15th Security Regiment, 4th National Guard Brigade, and uh, so you got a host of units uh, in this area that uh, are at risk of, uh, of being accosted uh, both to the uh, south, southeast, and kind of north, uh, northwest as well. And you got to understand, as this uh, as this pocket continues to tighten, uh, the uh, Russians are bringing in additional uh, heavy artillery battalions, uh, heavy uh, multiple launch rocket systems, and uh, continue to just pummel Ukrainian forces uh, in this area. And this is really what's causing a lot of the casualties on the ground right now in terms of uh, what we're seeing being inflicted upon uh, Ukrainian forces uh, in this uh, this ongoing fight. But uh, going back over, we're, we're again, we're going to watch things fairly closely uh, near Zaporizhia, see what happens, see what unfolds if in fact we see a limited Ukra Ukrainian uh, counteroffensive. Very, very possible. Also possible at some point, as I talked about before, we're going to see a, uh, a Russian uh, a fairly uh, large-scale offensive take place at some point along the uh, eastern bank uh, in the direction towards uh, Zaporizhia, the eastern bank of the uh, of the Dnieper River, and it's along this locale as uh, as well. But uh, again, I think on the surface we're seeing more and more Ukrainian units getting pushed 
uh, to th this area and attempting limited counterattacks uh, because the Ukrainians are still able uh, to uh, maneuver uh, somewhat unmolested uh, by uh, Russian interdiction efforts, whereas uh, further to uh, the east around Slovyansk, Kramatorsk, uh, it's, it's much more difficult for uh, the Ukrainians to operate uh, given the uh, level of uh, Russian activity. Uh, again, uh, roughly 70 uh, Russian battalion tactical groups operating in these areas. And, uh, but on top of that, the, just the, the massive use of, uh, of Russian heavy artillery and uh, long-range missile fire and tactical air assets are really uh, making, thing, making things uh, difficult for uh, the Ukrainian military. We're also receiving reports uh, from uh, what is happening kind of on the ground, uh, anecdotal reports from Ukrainian military sources that indicate that uh, their ability uh, to supply its forces in the field, especially uh, with uh, munitions and ammunition for uh, its our, our artillery forces, are becoming increasingly bleak. Uh, the Ukrainians right now are really relying on uh, the uh, Western infusion of equipment, uh, but mainly the West can only provide a lot of equipment for Western types of equipment. So, uh, so in terms of artillery, the Ukrainians use a lot of the 152 millimeter uh, tube artillery, and uh, unfortunately for the Ukrainians, the, the West uh, doesn't use a lot of 152 millimeter. They use the 155 millimeter. So, providing the Ukrainians with uh, 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 weapon systems or not weapon system a ammunitions for those uh, 152, 122, 130 millimeter uh, uh, artillery batteries uh, is becoming increasingly uh, difficult. And uh, obviously, the Russians have had the ability to strike at uh, infrastructure targets, supply depots that contain uh, those uh, those ammunition assets for you for the uh, Ukrainian military, and also at uh, Ukrainian production facilities. Ukrainian uh, U Ukraine does have uh, the ability to manufacture a lot of its own ammunition, munitions, and even artillery systems themselves. But unfortunately for the Ukrainians, the Russians are striking the ability of the, the Ukrainian state to manufacture both uh, said artillery systems and, more importantly, uh, the actual ammunition for those uh, systems. But uh, that's kind of what we're seeing right now, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to monitor the situation and report, watching things very, very closely uh, in the far eastern Donbass area, area of operations, specifically uh, several Donetsk near Bakhmut, and uh, this renewed push uh, by Russian forces uh, south of, uh, of Izum as well. And uh, again, things continue to become very, very precarious for uh, the, uh, the continued uh, Ukrainian effort uh, in this area, given the uh, pressure campaign that continues by uh, Russian forces. Well, again, thanks for joining us, and we'll have more very, very soon. Have a good day.